Mikel Arteta has transformed Arsenal into a fluid, dynamic team capable of overwhelming any opposition. His tactical evolution focuses on fluid positional play and relentless pressing, allowing Arsenal to dominate possession and dictate the tempo of matches. Arteta's system emphasizes versatility with players constantly interchanging roles and exploiting spaces, creating unpredictability and making the team difficult to defend against. Here is how you can recreate Arteta's tactics in FC24. It has become a staple point in Mikel Arteta and Arsenal's tactics that they use a 4-3-3 formation. This formation will then evolve into a box formation allowing for a back 3 to formulate with a midfield 4 and then having your 3 attackers up front. This will not only allow for positional interchanges to occur but it will also allow for the opposition to be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of attackers in and around their defensive zones. As we take a look at the tactical evolution implemented by Mikel Arteta, the tactical vision should be set to wing play that has also been a staple point in really establishing Arsenal's dominance from those wide areas, having the likes of Saka, Martinelli or the likes of Trossard in those wider zones combining very efficiently with either a fullback looking to overlap in the likes of Ben White or potentially underlap and invert into the midfield with the likes of Zinchenko or maybe even Yuri and Timber. But now what we have also seen is the likes of Declan Rice as well as Martin Odegaard sufficiently rotates into those wider areas of the field looking to interchange with the likes of the wingers. For the defensive approach, the defensive style should be set to press after possession loss as we do know that Arsenal look to aggressively assert themselves on the opposition when out of possession of the ball. They'll look to aggressively press them higher up the field making it very difficult for the opposition to really be able to play out from those backline areas. Now, Arsenal's defensive shape does tend to stretch itself quite a bit. They will set up in a 4-4-2 system, allowing either the likes of Odegaard or potentially Declan Rice to join the striker up front and creating that front two pressing structure. But you will see them implement a good zonal system, looking to try and cover every defensive area as possible, making sure that they are involved in the passing angles and lanes, breaking up the play, intercepting it, and then turning it into a swift, fluid transition attack. The depth of the team will be set to 85, as we do tend to see the back line, whether it's Ben White, Saliba, and Gabriel, or potentially Timber involved in that back line area, pressing higher up the field, being very involved in looking to rotate the offensive play, but also looking to condense the space between the lines, making it very difficult for the opposition when they have found success in passing the ball further forward, to really be able to have space and time on the ball to really find their next pass. The Arsenal centre-backs are encouraged to collect the ball from either the goalkeeper or one of the other fellow defenders and drive further with the ball higher up the field looking to create aggressive overloads either in the central zones or out wide in the flank areas. The offensive tactics for Arsenal whilst under Mikel Arteta hasn't really changed that much. Arteta is settled with how he wants his side to play when in possession of the ball and that is with a slow build-up as well as a possession-based chance creation. You do tend to see Arsenal building out their attacks from the back on a consistent basis, having likes of a very good ball-playing goalkeeper in David Raya, play that ball into the centre-backs and then having the confidence for the centre-backs to be able to collect the ball and then play it further forward. You will see the odd transition occur every now and then, having that longer ball played in over the top, but that is mainly down to the situations that might present themselves against the opposition. More times than not, you want the side rotating the play sufficiently, looking to rotate in and out of certain positions, looking to interchange positions, and making sure that you are maintaining that box formation in the central zones. The width of the team should be set to 75, allowing for multiple passing options to occur in those wider zones. This also means that you will have a lot of crossing and cutback opportunities created from those wider areas of the field. And that is why for players in the box, you should leave it on seven, allowing for at least three to four players to be in and around those attacking areas, waiting for those potential crossing or cutback opportunities to present themselves. Finally, the corners as well as the free kicks should be set to four. Now, when we convert the side into that box formation, that three, two, four, one attacking structure, these tactics will be implemented as well. So if we take a look at the individual player roles and instructions, we'll start off at the front with the likes of Kai Havertz, who has found a new lease of life, who has found a lot more confidence whilst leading the line for this Arsenal side, and you have seen steady improvements during his time at Arsenal. So for the support runs, he will be left on balance, allowing him to drift into those wider zones, and this will also allow for that fluidity to occur, having the likes of Martinelli interchange with Havertz on that left-hand side, or even the likes of Havertz interchanging with Saka. You will see that with this balanced role, he will be able to successfully be in and out of those central zones quite a lot. Now, of course, Havertz is a very good hold-up striker, can use his physicality back into the opposition, but he's also well known for the ability to drift into the midfield zones, combined very efficiently and effectively with the likes of Declan Rice and as well as Odegaard. And not only will this false nine role allow him to do that successfully, but it will also again create that nice fluid frontline system, allowing him to drop into the midfield and exchange and interchange positions with the likes of your two number eights. The interception should be set to aggressive as we have seen that Arteta does want his front line aggressively closing down the space between the back line and the midfield of the opposition of course, looking to try and intercept the play and then turn it into a transition attack. Finally, the defensive support should be left on balance as this allows the likes of Havertz to drop quite deep at times, help defend if needed or required, 
or potentially hang further up the field and be an outlet ball for the quick transitions or just being able to hold up the play and link it up very effectively with any potential players that are going to be in and around his attacking zone. Onto the left wing and the likes of Gabriel Martinelli will be set to come back on defense and this will apply to the likes of Trossard or even Sterling if they are deployed in those wider left zones. Now of course Arteta does want his two wingers tracking back sufficiently looking to try and support in those wider zones with the fullbacks. For the chance creation, it should be set to stay wide as we have seen the likes of Trossard or Martini hug the touchlines on that left-hand side, looking to really be a wide playmaker at times and open up a lot of central space for the attackers. The support run should be set to getting in behind as we do tend to see that direct attacking play from that left-hand channel looking to make those aggressive assertive runs in behind and exploit the opposition's back line. The interceptions will be set to aggressive and then finally you want your left winger at least looking to arc his runs into the box looking to be an offensive threat in those attacking zones. Onto your right-hand side and the likes of Bukayo Saka will also be set to come back on defense but what we do tend to see is his chance creation being set to maintaining a balanced width. Of course, we have seen the relationship develop over the last two or three seasons with the likes of Bukayo Saka being overlapped by the right back in Ben White. So you do want Saka operating as that touchline winger, but if the likes of Ben White is venturing further forward, you want him to operate in those half spaces, looking to combine very efficiently with the likes of Martin Odegaard and almost look to interchange positions and vacate that wider right space. The support runs will be set to balanced as well, allowing him to make those aggressive runs in behind, being a bit more of a direct attacking winger. Yes, we have seen that, but we've also seen the likes of Saka come short and drift into those central zones and look to combine with passing options and, and passing sequences in the midfield. The interception should be set to aggressive, and then finally the support on crosses should be left on balance, allowing Saka to break into the box himself, get on the end of those crosses or cutback opportunities, or potentially stay on the edge of the area and facilitate a cross to the back post. Your two number eights in Martin Odegaard, as well as Declan Rice, will have slightly differing roles, but both of them will be playing as those box-to-box -box players. You do tend to see both Rice as well as Odegaard when they have been deployed in those number eight positions, drifting up and down the field, looking to contribute to the offensive and defensive phases of play. The support on crosses for Odegaard will be set to stay on the edge of the box as he is the chief facilitator of the offense looking to be on the edge of the area looking to try and facilitate a lot of the attacking movements that we have seen from Arsenal in the past. The interception should be set to normal but if you would like to be a bit more assertive and aggressive with your pressing structure you can also set this to aggressive and then finally the defensive support will be set to cover the wing and the positioning freedom at least for the likes of Martin Odegaard will be set to free roam. You will allow him the freedom to drift all over the place, operating in the half spaces or even between the lines, allowing him to successfully be able to dictate the offensive approach and really be the playmaker that this side requires. Whereas the likes of Declan Rice will have a very similar role, we have seen him in a more advanced position to start off the season and even in their preseason games, where he has been allowed to operate slightly higher up the field and really show his more attacking outlets that he has in his game. The support on crosses will be left on balance, allowing him to be on the edge of the area, rotating the play or even breaking into the box himself and being an offensive threat from those wider left spaces. The interceptions will be left on normal and then finally cover the wing and drift wide. You will see the likes of Rice combining very effectively with the left winger in that left hand space and this is more or less where he's been very effective when, when attacking the half spaces. The defensive midfield and Thomas Partey will be left on a balanced role for the defensive behavior as he does tend to intercept the play every now and then but he's not super aggressive with trying to win the ball back in those defensive areas. He can look to just position himself in the correct zones looking to try and break up the play as best as possible. The defensive midfielder does tend to be the deepest line midfield player at times so therefore he should be set to stay back while attacking. The interceptions will be left on normal and then finally he will be the deep line playmaker as well as cover the central zones. Quite often when we see the two fullbacks either overlapping or inverting playing higher up the field, we do tend to see the likes of Gabriel Saliba as well as Thomas Partey formulate a back three system. And that is where the likes of Thomas Partey will be set to cover the central zones as well as being the deep line playmaker. Both him as well as Rice and even Odegaard all tend to interchange with this role looking to drop deep and facilitate in that first phase of the build-up play. For the left back role now both Timber as well as Zinchenko or even the likes of Tom Yasu can all play with these instructions and that will be join the attack. We have seen quite often the left back venturing further forward either into the midfield or higher up the field looking to add to the attacking elements. Now of course we do know that Zinchenko as well as Timber are very efficient when looking to invert into the midfield so it's looking to really establish a midfield base for the rest of the attackers to build up off of being very good at collecting the ball in those deeper zones and then looking to either pass it forward or drive with it further forward into the attacking areas. With this role implemented you will see them either inverting into the midfield, potentially that's what you do once, or looking to underlap the left winger and add to the attacking outlet down that left hand channel. Whereas your right back will be set to having a balanced attacking role looking to attack when the opportunities present themselves. But I have said Ben White to this role because we have seen that when Timber or Zinchenko get forward or get into the midfield zones, we have seen the back three formulate with Ben White, Saliba and Gabriel. 
Now, obviously, we have also seen the likes of Ben White overlapping the likes of Saka going forward, and that is why for the run type, when he does get forward, you want him to consistently overlap and generate a lot of the width down that left-hand space, looking to whip in crosses or cut back opportunities from that wider right space. Your two centre backs in Saliba as well as Gabriel will have very similar roles, with the likes of Gabriel being a bit more of the aggressor of the two, looking to step up and impose himself a fair amount on the opposition forward line players. But otherwise, both of these players will maintain their base role and instructions. You will see them being very effective in the builder play in that first phase, and also being able to collect the ball under pressure and then rotate it out wide to the fullbacks or potentially into the midfield zones. Finally, the role of David Raya will be set to come for crosses as he has vastly improved his ability to be very physically dominant in the air and mainly claim a lot of those aerial threats when they have been knocked into the box. The saving outside of the box should be set to being that sweeper keeper as you are playing a very hard line and you would require a goalkeeper to be ready off of his line looking to sweep up just in behind the Arsenal backline areas and of course with Raya and this builder play that you are looking to initiate you do require him to be successful when playing out from the back with the ball. Now we have seen Arteta's Arsenal interchange between a 4-3-3 as well as a 3-2-4-1 aggressive attacking system. Now they look to implement the system with a box formation allowing them to dominate the midfield zones and essentially create a dominant attacking structure looking to overload and overwhelm the opposition higher up the field. This is where the left back will look to invert into the midfield zones playing alongside the defensive midfielder and looking to really establish a good offensive platform for the rest of the side to build off of. Onto the instructions for the various different players and the likes of Raya will be set to the same role and instructions as before and the same can be set for both Saliba as well as the likes of Gabriel who will be set to step up. Now for the likes of Saliba, he is deployed in that central centre back role but I have deployed him actually as a right sided centre back and this is due to the fact that when Ben White does venture forward, which we will talk about soon enough, you want the likes of Saliba drifting over to that right hand side formulating a very good two man base for this defence. And of course, speaking of the likes of Ben White, deployed as a right back in the system, but of course, more centrally and almost playing as a hybrid right back slash right sided centre back, he'll be set to join the attack and overlap. And this will still create that aggressive overlapping system and relationship that we have seen between the likes of Ben White as well as the likes of Bukayo Saka. Your midfield base consisting of Partey as well as Timber will see the likes of Partey's role change quite significantly. When you see the likes of Ben White venturing high up the field and looking to attack in those wider zones, you will see Partey dropping between the two centre backs, looking to formulate successfully a very good, solid back three system. The interceptions will be left on normal, and then finally, being the deep line playmaker and cover the centre will be pivotal in establishing Thomas Partey's role in the side. Whereas his midfield counterpart in Duran Timber does have a bit more of an attacking freedom to him to be able to venture further forward and attack from those central areas, or even being able to successfully drifting out wide, whether it's defending or potentially attacking in those wider zones. We've seen the likes of Zinchenko operating on the touchlines, at times looking to link the play from those slightly wider left channel areas, and that is exactly what you will see for the likes of Timber. But of course, Timber is very good at being able to collect the ball in those deeper spaces, and then being able to drive further forward, creating aggressive assertive attacking overloads. Your central midfielder and Declan Rice will maintain the same role and instructions as before. You want him being an all-action, all-phases midfielder, operating on both the offensive and defensive phases of play, but also being able to get into the box and add to the attacking elements inside that final third area. Or maybe even rotating the play on the edge of the box, maybe looking to facilitate an offensive movement. Whereas the likes of Martin Odegaard will be playing as an attacking midfielder, looking to be an outlet and facilitate the offensive approach. Now, the defensive support as well as the supports on crosses will be left unbalanced, respectively, as you do tend to see him dropping quite deep at times, dropping into those defensive zones, looking to help contribute when out of possession of the ball, or he can stay higher up the field and be an outlet for the attack himself. And then, of course, we have seen a slight tweak in variation to the support on crosses, as you do tend to see Odegaard in the box facilitating an offensive movement, or maybe just getting on the end of a cross or a cutback himself. So for the positioning freedom, I have set this to stick to position as if you set it to free room or drift wide, you will see him operating in those wider spaces a hell of a lot. And that is not exactly what you would want and require. You want the likes of Saka as well as Odegaard to function in that half space together, looking to interchange positions every now and then, but looking to combine very effectively and overload the opposition in that wider right space. And then finally, the interception should be set to aggressive. Both of your wingers will maintain the same role and instructions as they had before, as you want them to be able to successfully attack from those wider spaces, but not really changing too much with their attacking run patterns. And the same can be said for Kai Havertz, deployed up front as that false nine, he'll be set to the same role and instructions as before, and due to the fact that you have that box formation, you will see him interchanging a lot more passing sequences with your midfield players. Now, of course, this will also see him interchange positions and roles at times with the likes of Odegaard, Rice, Martinelli, or even the likes of Bukayo Saka. And there you go, people. That is how I would successfully go ahead and recreate Mikel Arteta's more evolved, more fluid, 
arsenal set of tactics and instructions for fc24 i do hope you have enjoyed the system and if you don't mind smashing the like button down below of course the last time we made the arsenal tactics we saw a very static dm position allowing for the likes of Declan Rice to really be at the base of the midfield whereas now you will see the likes of thomas Partey drifting into the back line getting slightly hyped the field if needed or required being an option to rotate the play so it, it is slightly more evolved and again more fluid compared to the last time anyways i hope you have a smashing goddamn day i'm out of here peace